Our next period of instruction is on the nasopharyngeal airway. The nasopharyngeal airway is used to establish and maintain an airway in a conscious or unconscious casualty. Before inserting the MPA, I want to place the casualty on their back and their head in a neutral position. And I'm going to inspect their nose for any obvious obstructions. The nasopharyngeal typically comes in a blister pack ready to use and oftentimes comes with its own water-based lubricant. The MPA has two parts. You have your beveled end and you have your flanged end. When inserting the MPA, you want to make sure your beveled end is towards the middle of the nose or facing the septum. And you're going to insert it to the flange tip is flush with the nose. When you're inserting an MPA, one of the most important things to remember is to insert it at a 90 degree angle to the patient's face. And when I say 90 degree angle, what I'm talking about is the tip of the MPA needs to be going in directly 90 degrees on that patient's face. The reason for this is that if you don't do it, your MPA can slide upwards or to the side. The first step in inserting the MPA is to measure the nasopharyngeal airway and make sure it's going to fit your casualty. This is done by holding the flanged end to the patient's nose tip and the beveled end should meet with the bottom of the patient's earlobe. The standard size NPA is 32 French. This is going to fit most adult casualties. The next step is to lubricate your NPA. I want to make sure that I use a water-based lubricant and if it's not available I can use water or the patient's saliva. Ensure that you're not going to use any kind of blood or any fluid that could cause damage to the patient's nose. I'm going to open up my packet of lube and you just need a little bit on there and smear it around the tip and then get my casualty ready for insertion. I'm going to take the fingers of my hand and place them on my casualty's forehead. I'm then going to take my thumb and place it on the casualty's nose tip. I'm then going to do what's called the piggy nose by pulling my patient's nose back. Again, I'm going to ensure that the beveled end of my NPA is facing towards the patient's center nose line or septum. When I'm inserting my MPA, I want to ensure that it goes in at a 90 degree angle to the face. We're now ready for insertion. So when I insert the MPA, it's just a quick fluid movement, straight down. After the MPA is properly inserted, you're going to want to assess your casualties breathing and respiration. This again is done by using the look, listen, and feel technique. I'm going to place my ear against the NPA and the patient's mouth, look towards the feet, watching for rise and fall of the chest listening for breath sounds, and again, feeling the breath against my cheek. If you're unable to get the NPA into the right nostril, whether it's from resistance or it's just not going in, you're gonna to wanna to remove the NPA and insert it into the left nostril. The difference between the left and the right is that you need to maintain bevel integrity and make sure the bevel is facing towards the septum of the nose or the middle of the nose. You also will notice that the NPA is angled. When you're inserting into the left nostril, after you get approximately two inches into the nose, you need to rotate the NPA so that the curvature is towards the patient's feet. This prevents the NPA from getting lodged up into the patient's throat or in an area where it doesn't belong. Additionally, while inserting the NPA, if your casualty begins to gag or choke, you're going to pull the NPA out slightly and leave it in place. Once your casualty has an adequate and maintained airway, you're going to place them in the recovery position. Or if conscious, in a position of comfort and document my care on a DD Form 1380.